Hi, I'm Bob. Let's continue our solutions to the exercises for Chapter 4, the effects of a price change on the demand, and the decomposition of the total effect into the substitution effect and the income effect. I use the textbook Microeconomics, Theory and Applications with Calculus, the fifth edition. Let's see exercise 3.7. Lucy views Bayer aspirin and Tylenol as perfect substitutes. Initially, the aspirin is cheaper. However, a price increase makes aspirin more expensive than Tylenol. In the diagram, show the substitution, income, and total effect of this price change. The indifference curves for perfect substitutes are straight lines with a slope of minus 1. The initial budget line L1 is flatter than the indifference curves because the P1 is smaller than P2, and the price ratio P1 over P2 is smaller than 1. The highest possible indifference curve I1 touches the budget line L1 at the corner solution E1 where the consumer spends her entire income on Q1. Buy aspirin. As the price increase makes aspirin more expensive than Tylerol, the budget line rotates inward from L1 to L2. The optimal bundle is E2, where the consumer only buys Q2, Tylerol. The movement from E1 to E2 is the total effect of the price increase in P1. It can be decomposed into the substitution effect a movement from E1 to E star and the income effect a movement from E star to E2. The imaginary dashed budget line L star has the same slope as the new budget line L2 and is touching the old indifference curve, I1. We use the imaginary budget line to illustrate the pure substitution effect. For Q1, buyer aspirin, the substitution effect causes the quantity demanded to reduce to zero. There is no income effect, and therefore the total effect is the substitution effect. For Q2, Tylenol, the substitution effect and the income effect move in opposite directions, and the total effect is the sum of them. Let's solve exercise 3.8. The consumer's quasi-linear utility function is as follows. His budget is y equals 10. Originally, the prices are p1 equals p2 equals 1. However, the price of the first good rises to P1 equals 2. Discuss the substitution, income, and total effect on the demand for Q1. This exercise is also about decomposing the total effect of a price change into a substitution effect and an income effect. We are using the quasi-linear utility function this time. We can solve the problem in four steps. In the first step, we figure out the bundle before the price change. We use the tangency condition. The marginal rate of substitution always equals the marginal rate of transformation at the point where the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line. The former equals the marginal utility ratio and the latter equals the price ratio we obtain the optimal quantity of Q1, which equals 4. Substituting it into the budget constraint gives the optimal quantity of Q2, which equals 6. So we have the Q1 and Q2 coordinates of the optimal bundle E1 before the price change. Similarly, we calculate the coordinates for the optimal consumption bundle E2 after the price change in the second step. 
q1 equals 1 and q2 equals 8. In the third step, we need to determine the bundle E star. It is the point where the consumer keeps the original utility but faces the new prices. The imaginary budget line L star has the same slope as the new budget line L2 and is tangent to the original indifference curve I1. Using the tangency condition, we obtain the optimal quantity of Q1, which is 1. Then we use the fact that E star and E1 are at the same indifference curve and have the same utility. We already know the quantities at E1. We can compute the utility level for the indifference curve I1, which is 14 utiles. So we get the quantity of Q2 at E star. In the fourth step, with E1, E star, and E2 on the diagram, we decompose the total effect into the substitution effect and the income effect. The increase in P1 rotates the budget line inward from L1 to L2. The imaginary budget line L star is parallel to the new budget line L2 and is tangent to the original indifference curve I1. The movement from E1 to E star is the substitution effect. The quantity of Q1 demanded falls from 4 to 1. The movement from E star to E2 is the income effect. There is no income effect in this case. The movement from E1 to E2 is the total effect of the price increase in P1. It is identical to the substitution effect in this case. Let's solve exercise 3.9. The consumer wills ice cream and fudge sauce as perfect complements. Is it possible that either of these goods or both of them are given goods? For perfect complements, we have the optimal bundle Q1 equals Q2 equals Y divided by P1 plus P2. The partial derivative shows that the quantity demanded and the own price move in opposite directions. The quantity increases as the goods price falls. Neither of the goods can be a given good. Let's solve exercise 3.10. The consumer's utility function is as follows. Derive her compensated, Hickson, demand, and expenditure functions. It is a utility function for perfect complements. The consumer uses the two goods in a fixed proportion equal to J, that is, J units of Q1 or one unit of Q2 give the consumer the same utility if used together. So, for the optimal bundle, Q2 equals Y divided by the price of the J units of Q1 and 1 unit of Q2. Q1 is J times of Q2. Then, we can write the indirect utility function in terms of income and prices. The expenditure function is the relationship between the minimum expenditures necessary to achieve a specific utility level for a given set of prices. It is the inverse of the indirect utility function. By Schaeffer's lemma, partial E over partial P1 is the compensated demand or Hickson demand function for Q1, and partial E over partial P2 is the Hickson demand function for Q2.
Let's solve exercise 3.11. Bill's utility function is as follows. What is his compensated demand function for Q1? We notice that the utility function is equivalent to a Cobb Douglas utility function. We can get it by applying a positive monotonic transformation to the Cobb Douglas utility function u equals q1 to the power 0 0.5 times q2 to the power 0 0.5. The positive monotonic transformation will not change the shape of the indifference curve, so they have the same optimal consumption bundle. Q1 equals 0 0.5 times y over p1, and Q2 equals 0 0.5 times y over p2. We should be able to write the solution to the Cobb Douglas utility function directly now. This is the first step, that is to derive the optimal quantities. In the second step, we substitute the optimal quantities demanded to the utility function to obtain the indirect utility function in terms of income and prices. In the third step, we place y on the left-hand side and write it as a function of utility and prices. This is the expenditure function. It is the minimum expenditure that can achieve the utility level U bar. Then, by Schaeffer's lemma, the compensated demand or Hickson demand functions for Q1 and Q2 are the partial derivatives of the expenditures with respect to the prices. Or we can use the Lagrangian method. We minimize the expenditures subject to a specific level of utility. Using the three first order conditions, we solve for the quantities of demand in terms of prices and utility. They are the compensated demand functions because the utility is held constant. Let's find answers to exercise 3.12. The utility function is as follows. Derive the compensated Hickson demand and expenditure functions. It is the linear utility function for perfect substitutes. The indifference curves are straight lines with a slope of minus 1 over 2. There are corner solutions to the optimal consumption bundles. We need to compare the slopes of the indifference curves and the slope of the budget lines. We consider two cases. In the first case, the budget line is flatter than the indifference curves. The corner solution is E1, where the consumer spends his entire income on Q1. Q1 equals Y over P1, and Q2 equals 0. Substituting the quantity into the utility function gives the indirect utility function in terms of Y and price. Then we write income on the left-hand side. It is the expenditure function. By Schaeffer's lemma, the compensated demand or Hickson demand function is the derivative of the expenditures with respect to the price. So we have the Hickson demand function for Q1 equal to U bar. Similarly, 
we have the Hickson demand function for Q2 in the second case when the consumer only purchases Q2. Thank you so much for solving the exercises with me today. See you tomorrow in the next part in Chapter 4. Goodbye. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.